Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. Joe Biden Watching finally gave Tucker his first Carlson. press conference this afternoon. No president has ever waited this long to answer questions in public. And as of just yesterday, we were not still entirely sure it would happen. A reporter at the White House saw Biden ambling around and asked him if he was ready for his first press conference. What? Ambling? I mean, all right, look, I know that Tucker Carlson is literally a grifter, but like, come on, bruh press conference, Biden replied. Apparently, in the end, somebody told him. A staffer pointed Biden toward the tape mark on the floor and gave him a shove. Biden shuffled forth and started talking and pausing and then talking some more and then pausing. You've heard the term pregnant pause. Joe Biden's pauses were third trimester quintuplets. These pauses were ready to wow. burst. Here's one of them. Good one. So the best way to get something done, if you, if it holds near and dear to you that you uh, um, like to be able to, anyway, <laughs> I'm, we're going to get a lot done. <laughs> Got that, America? We're going to get a lot done. A lot. Yikes. Of course, we'll get a lot Yikes. more done and confuse far fewer people if we go ahead I mean, and read look, our I, policy you know, positions I mean, that's, that's from very small sad, pieces of paper no, that I mean, others have painted. It's also an old man, too. Like, I mean, I don't that know. way we won't lose consciousness in mid-sentence or accidentally start a war. So when the topic of North Korea arose, Joe Biden knew exactly what to do. He found his piece of paper and he started reading the words that had been written on it. We're consulting with our allies and partners and... Uh, there will be uh, responses if they choose to escalate. Um, we will respond accordingly. But I'm also prepared uh, um, for some form of diplomacy. That's got to be pretty intimidating to, to the North Koreans, who, of course, are watching it in real time. They've got nukes in Pyongyang now, and that means they probably have cable TV, too. Don't underestimate these people. They're crafty. Of course, the North Koreans were already deeply afraid of Joe Biden. They know that he means business. They remember the time that Biden beat the crap out of the entire Kim family with a chain. He and Nelson Mandela back in 86. You've heard the story. They've lived it. It's part of their lore. And now this. North Korea is facing not just Joe Biden's what? masculinity, but an entire piece of paper with instructions on it that Joe Biden is perfectly willing to read anytime he needs to. That cue card is Joe Biden's secret weapon in the fight against nuclear proliferation. You can breathe easy, America. And that's good news because we've got problems of our own in this country. One of our biggest problems is voting. It's getting harder and harder to vote. There are some people in America, bigots, let's just call them what they are, who are demanding that we know voters' identities before we let them choose our government. They want people to show IDs at the polls, if you can even imagine, in 2021. These bigots, Joe Biden explained today, are Republicans. And so I'm convinced that we'll be able to stop this because it is the most pernicious thing. This makes Jim Crow look like Jim Eagle. What? Jim Eagle? Who's Jim Eagle? <laughs> See, here's the thing, like, old Joe is going to say, I mean, he's just going to mess everything up. I mean, like, the dude... I mean, look, I, there's multiple reasons why I'm not a fan of Joe Biden. He's he's really not left at all, so I, that's, like, the main reason. But also, he's, like, it seems very obvious to me, and I think everyone that isn't, like, literally a shill for Joe Biden, that he has, like, some kind of, like, troubles with his mind and his uh, ability to speak and, and, like, so forth. I Like, I feel like if, if you were to go on Twitch or on YouTube... Uh, and look at the average person who is discussing politics and you were to compare them to Joe Biden in terms of like the ability to have a rhetorical analysis, uh, yeah. YouTuber's going to win. And that ain't probably where it should be at. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say that he's unfit to command. I don't know anything about that, but. I, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I, um, as a, as a hell of a thing. A comic book hero from the fifties, some kind of dog face pony soldier. We didn't know who Jimmy. <laughs> I'm sorry. 
<laughs> when he said hog face pony soldier the first time, I I damn near just lost it. The was so we went scurrying to our Google machines to look it up. Then we realized, duh, we're being way too literal here. It's an analogy. Crow, eagle. They're both birds, but an eagle is much bigger than a crow. That means that asking people to show a driver's license when they vote is much more racist than segregation and lynchings. Segregation and lynchings were Jim Crow. Voter IDs are Jim Eagle. Way worse. And that makes sense when you think about it. Most black people don't have government-issued IDs, and that's why they can't drive cars or fly in airplanes or hold jobs or stay in hotels or go to the doctor or cash checks or sign rental agreements or buy homes or open bank accounts or purchase Sudafed at CVS. Black people can't do any of those things because they don't have IDs. I want to make this real, real uh, clear first off. Uh, you absolutely can grab Sudafed at, at CVS without an ID. That's just a fact. Um, although it is, it is interesting. Like there's like, see, like, here's like the problem, right? So like people like Hucker Carlson want to be like, oh yeah, like, uh, ineffectual effect liberals are racist against black people, which is, uh, generally true. Right. But then he wants to kind of use that and like, be like, and conservatives aren't, it's like, no, y'all are too. That's the... <laughs> <laughs> like, just because uh, liberals are racist against black people and think that black people can't find an ID does not mean that y'all don't, like, say the N-word and such. That's not how. <laughs> uh, three random building cards or one house. Me to be liking these. By D's. Millions and millions of them don't have IDs, and it's sad, as Joe Biden often points out. Now, you might think the solution to this tragedy would be make it easier for Americans to get IDs, subsidize them if you have to. No, Joe Biden has a better idea. Just make sure that no one ever has to show an ID in order to vote. And that way, the millions and millions and millions of African Americans who somehow don't have IDs won't feel bad or left out. They still won't be able to drive cars or have jobs or bank accounts or live anywhere, but at least they can vote a lot and the rest of us won't be racist. Problem solved. As Joe <laughs> Biden just told us, he's going to get a lot done. And not just in the next four years, by the way, but in the four years after that. Joe Biden is running again. He told us that today, too. By the end of his second term, Joe Biden will be 86 years old. That's a full decade past the life expectancy of the average American man, which for the record, Joe Biden has already exceeded. But there's nothing average about Joe Biden. Time improves him. Like certain varieties of artisanal cheese, Joe Biden is meant to be aged. He just gets sharper and more pungent. His next campaign will be even tastier. Watch. Have you decided whether you are going to run for re-election in 2024? You haven't set up a re-election campaign yet, as your predecessor had by this time. <laughs> My predecessor need to, needed to. <laughs> My predecessor. Oh, God, I miss him. Um, no, the answer is yes. My plan is to run for re-election. That's my expectation. My plan is to run for re-election. Now, we weren't in the room when Joe Biden said that, but according to those who were, there was an audible gasp of horror from behind the curtain. Sources said it sounded very much like Kamala Harris. We can't confirm that, but we can tell you that Joe Biden has already picked a theme for his next campaign. The theme is unity. Now, wait a second, you might be thinking. Wasn't unity the theme of Biden's last campaign, the one that just ended in November? Yes, it was. But that wasn't enough unity. There is more unity on the way, ladies and gentlemen. Bucket loads of it, tractor trailer loads full. Imagine every swimming pool in Malibu topped to the brim with unity, and then add all the pools in Bel Air. That's how much unity we're talking about. And by unity, of course, we mean policies that make Americans I'll hate each other much level. more than they ever have. That's what Joe Biden has given us so far, and soon we'll have more. The third reason I said I was running was to unite the country. And generically speaking, all of you said, no, you can't do that. Well, I've not been able to unite the Congress, but I've been uniting the country based on the polling data. We have to come together. Oh, the polling data the real currency of Washington. Now, we haven't checked the polling data ticker. 
See, it's like weird because like he wants to concentrate on that part of it, and like the real deal is like no, just concentrate on the fact that like he couldn't even really get the thought out, dude. Like that's the that's the kicker. Like you don't have to like criticize him on like his policy here or like what he's like attempting to substantively say because once you do that you're like filling in the blanks for him like the like the worst thing that like you can you can say to him is just be like oh yeah like i can't understand what the hell he's saying like that's more or less all you need to say about about joe biden like it's not it's not hard to like crush that i don't know today but we have to tell you that we approach this one specific claim with some degree of skepticism not every one of joe biden's unifying policies has fully unified the country just yet there are still some crotchety holdouts deep in the american interior who aren't fully sold on his fresh new program of being humiliated berated disarmed and taxed into poverty and powerlessness those people are bigots, obviously. They're probably friends with the snake-handling evangelical freaks who complain when some dude shows up at their eight-year-old daughter's locker room. Uh, I, 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 see, here's what I love about conservatives now. They really just love to do this thing where they're like, oh, man, like, we're going to say something edgy. Let's say all of the edgy things that we can within four seconds and if we do, somehow, like, it will seem less messed up. So it's like, uh, like, mention, like, evangelicals and how people are, like, not cool with them, like, unjustly or, like, whatever. And then, like, oh, let's, like, hit trans people or whatever. It's like, why? Also, like, it is, I am, I am just about tired completely through with like the trans issue stuff it's just like it's so tired because the thing is is like nobody has a good take the right just wants to use trans people as like a scary thing to bring up to like i guess scare the center um People on the far left generally don't really much care. Like, we already have, like, our, our like, feel on it. We already understand, like, oh, this is, like, what we, like, want to do. This is what we, like, feel about it. So there's no, like, particular, like, there's no, like, we don't care. Like, maybe my take isn't the same thing as, like, someone else's take or, like, whatever. I don't really know. But, like, it's not, like, it's not as far away from the right take or like whatever like the the flavor of like the month take on it is you know what i mean it's like no one really substantively cares so it's this thing where it's like no one on the left cares the right just uses it as like a scary spooky do and so it's like well what are we really doing and the answer is it's like oh well pretty much we just like say many things about trans people because that like ends up being like the uh like the answer and it's like man like that's like a really like shitty thing to do like they're not like at like at at this juncture we bring up trans people which are such a small percentage of like the population we like bring them up all of the time so we're always talking about them in in as you see like unrelated stuff Unrelated, like this is this is a video about how Joe Biden can't speak, right? And so now we're talking about trans people now. Even though trans people didn't have one damn thing to do with why Joe Biden can't talk, right? But now we're talking about them because we like to use them as a boogie man. And it's like, it's just, it's just ridiculous. It's like, let's not talk about it anymore. It's, it's not like, not unless we're actually going to have a substantive discussion regarding that. I'm tired of hearing about people being dis like discussed when they're not what we're actually talking about. Like, you can't just be like, oh yeah, trans people. Like it, you can't 
just bring up trans people because you want to sound woke. You can't just bring them up because you want to scare the center. It ain't fair to people. It ain't fair to people. Because if we're not going to actually discuss it, we're not going to bring up points. We're not going to have the ability to, to, to change people's hearts and minds. That's just, I mean, that's that's horrible. And obviously some people might say, oh, well, it's worse when like the right does it. Like, well, is it? Is it? You know, because we can say, oh, well, the right actually hates trans people. And, and I, I think that the reality is, is that the right actually, they don't know what the hell to think about trans people. I mean, some people probably do, right? But I don't think it's as many as people think. I think that, uh, I don't know. I, like, I feel like it's just as bad whenever someone in the center who's like a liberal brings them up to talk about how much, like, how, like, progressive they are, or, like, whatever thing. It's like, those are people. They're not something for you to bring up to show your friends how cool you are. Uh, they ain't something to scare folks. It's a, they're, they're, they are people. They exist. They're individuals. They deserve respect. You ought not to bring them up for clout or for fear. And I, it's just, it's shocking to me. I mean, I know it's Tucker Carlson, Tucker Carlson. I, I understand that. So maybe I ought not to be shocked at one damn thing he says, but to bring him up like that and to weaponize people is one of the more unchristian things I have seen this week. And let me tell you, I have seen many unchristian things this week. You're rude, Tucker. But whatever, you can't please everyone. You know who you can please, though, if you're Joe Biden? The media. The reporters are highly pleased. They're one group that remains utterly united in their love and support of Joe Biden, and the polling data show it. Joe Biden knows this well, but he's not pandering to reporters. Joe Biden is bigger than that. It's not like the Washington Post is a credit card company from Delaware. He doesn't need to slobber on them. So today, Joe Biden explained that despite his massive successes on our southern border, the ones you're seeing on TV, he is not ready to show reporters exactly what he's doing down there. That's for him to know and them to find out. We haven't seen the facilities in which children are packed together to really give the American people a chance to see that. Will you commit to transparency on this issue? I will commit to transparency. And as soon as I am in a position to be able to implement what we're doing right now. Well, that's kind of unusual. You don't often hear a politician admit that he's rejecting openness and embracing secrecy. They usually lie about that, but not Joe Biden. Biden tends to say the unspoken things out loud. We're as opaque as a shower curtain, he told the press corps today, and there's nothing you can do about it. It's pretty provocative. Of course it is but provocative in a way that reporters enjoyed. They're naughty, those reporters. They like to be teased. Deny them what they ask for, and they want more. Here's a lady from state media, National Public Radio, flush with wonder as she describes the remarkable personal qualities of her boss, Joe Biden. You've said over and over again that immigrants shouldn't come to this country right now. This isn't the time to come. That message is not being received. Instead, the perception of you that got you elected as a moral, decent man is the reason why a lot of immigrants are coming to this country and entrusting you with unaccompanied minors. <laughs> what a weird way to put that. I, I don't think that anyone is trusting Joe Biden with unaccompanied minors. I think that's uh, a massive misrepresentation of uh, what's happening at the border. I think that Joe Biden, on and large, is simply maintaining a system that has been in place for many, many years under multiple administrations. And I believe that he is doing that in the same way that it always has been done with minor modifications that do not substantively have anything to do with actually increasing the state of the people who are forced to stay there. I, I don't think it's anything aside from happenstance that 
some things might have changed in some small way or another. Uh, I, I think that, that that's it. I don't think that uh, people who are fleeing violence or coming here to look for a better life are thinking to themselves, oh, well, at least good, kind Joe Biden will uh, uh, look to our unattended children while they're in lockup. I don't think that's what's going on. I think people are coming here hoping to not get caught, and then they do. I don't think there were, anyone was thinking, well, at least good old Joe. I, that's, that's wild. When you call a man moral and decent in your question to him, it kind of sets the frame, as they say. But the bottom line is a moral, decent man is running this country, ladies and gentlemen. That's the message of unity. And by the way, it's a required message. So repeat it to yourself five times and then repeat it to everyone you know. If you don't, you're racist. One. What? That's wild. That doesn't make it. <laughs> what? Introducing the new Verizon what? Business Unlimited plans. What? Get 5G nationwide. What? Plus, massive data capacity. What did Plus, I just mix and match to get more of what you need. Sense. All for as low as $30 a line. From Verizon, the network businesses rely on. What a, what a wild, say it, what was it? Like, say it five times in like the mirror or something? Like, you can just say anything now. That, that has no paces. Like, that's not referencing anything that's just oh yeah just just do this because i'm i'm crazy C -C carl Tuckerson. like what what the hell